I was just going to thank you for hosting the show while I was gone. That's all. It was great. Thank you. Jackass. Thank you for that opportunity. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm back, too. I'm glad I'm back, too. All right, we're ready? Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Think Bigger, the show that inspires you to think beyond today and tomorrow to help you achieve your biggest ambitions. And I'm back after taking a few weeks off to spend some time with my new beautiful baby boy and the family back here on the set in the office at the Launch Digital Marketing Studios, bringing you another episode of Think Bigger. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my man Joe Chira for stepping in to guest host while I was gone. Joe did an awesome job. He had some great guests and uh, really brought some, some new content. And I learned uh, a bunch of things while I was gone watching these shows. I hope you did too. And that kind of brings us to where we are at today. Uh, we've got you know, about two months worth of Think Bigger episodes in the books, and we, we really should pause right here and reflect back upon what we learned so far, because I've noticed by hosting the show a lot of themes that are recurring from our big thinker guests. And we've had senators, we've had entrepreneurs, we've had internet sensations, and they come from these different walks of life, but you can see the commonalities in their Think Bigger mindset. And I want to step back, kind of go back a little bit and look at some of these guests, look at the information they brought to you and they, they brought to me, and really kind of lay the foundation once again for you developing your own Think Bigger mindset so you can get on the road and start achieving your biggest ambitions. Are you ready? Let's go do this. Let's check it out. So we'll just go to a title sequence there. Yeah, title sequence. Okay. Title sequence. So if we go back to episode one, the guest on Think Bigger was Danny Dover, uh, founder of LifeListed.com, a best-selling author, just one of the smartest and most interesting people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. And through our conversation, one of the things that, that I learned from Danny is that if you want to take these Think Bigger ideas and get them out of your head and, and, and turn them into a real life thing, is you have to set goals for yourself, goals that you can achieve. So Danny had some great advice on setting goals and how you can do it too, and through the magic of editing. Let's go check it out. So for me, the big tactical tool has been using smart goals. So breaking down big problems, uh, you can't. I don't think you just start out thinking bigger. I think that you have to start thinking smaller in many ways, and then you're like, hey, those all all those ideas connect. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting. So taking that there. So what I do, and I think what's made the biggest difference in my life, is reading a book called Getting Things Done by David Allen, and he has a system for getting things done. And what he does is he takes all of your big projects, these things that are overwhelming, and breaks them into small sizes, and he creates a system so you can handle these these things that are coming through. Okay. All these crazy requests. So by doing that, and it, it's the same ideas as smart goals. Uh, then I think that professional life becomes more manageable because you can start prioritizing things, which again, from my worldview, prioritization is the root of all problems that people are running into. So if you know where you're trying to go, then it makes it much easier to prioritize. This system that he's developed has been really useful for me for trying to figure out, okay, how do I logistically take the priorities I have, apply them to the situation that's around me for making money, for spending time with friends, for whatnot, uh, so that I can then make this realistic and useful. Bam, I like that. Good I like that. You're doing good, bro. You too. Do a little. Well, you're doing all the talking. Yes. So now that we have our goal set, we're we're well on our way to achieving our ambitions. And what's going to happen? And I've seen this with every single person that I've talked to, and with every single person that Joe has talked to, is that eventually you're going to encounter an obstacle. It is the reality of the world that obstacles are going to be placed in your path, and it's how you deal with those obstacles that make the difference between achieving your ambitions or just giving up and uh, trying again some other day. But the reality is, is you can get past them if you're creative. And talk about a creative way to get around an obstacle. Look how Joe Chura was able to get around an obstacle when there was a job he wanted but was unable to apply for it. Let's check it out. Well, so what, what happened is, as a UAW employee, I couldn't even apply for that job. So Ford had this system where they would post internal jobs, but because I was a UAW worker, there was no way for me to apply for that job and have the right ID or, or, or something like that. So the gentleman that told me, I'm forever indebted to, his name is Willis Chin. And uh, Willis is the one that told me about this position. 
And at the time, um, I was just I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, well, I can't even apply for it. You know, I, there was no contact number. There's nothing like that. Everything's this internal jargon, and I didn't know what it meant. So a couple days pass, and um, I go up to Willis, and I just said, hey, that job you were talking about, can I apply for it under your name? And then just right away say, hey, I'm not Willis Chin. And he said, sure, I don't care. Go for it. You know, and, and I did. And uh, I interviewed for the, for the position, and long story short, I got it. And I would have never got it if I, didn't, if I just accepted that barrier that was in front of me and, uh, and just went with it and said, well, well, that's too bad, right? So when I had the pleasure of sitting down and talking to Honda Pro Jason, he really said something that, that struck me, and then it was something else that I noticed that other big thinkers had said too. And that's when you have this big idea, this big ambition, this big thing you want to accomplish, you have to tell people about it. You have to let them know. You can't keep it to yourself. You gotta get it out there, and this is really easy to do. Check this out. Hey guys, I've got a show called Think Bigger. Will you watch it for me? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, right. See how easy that is? And here's how a Honda Pro Jason did it. I really took this on as a side project to just to help educate people on what was going on. And I never thought that it would turn into what it is now. Because it's, it's present day, it's a full-time career. And, and it was just, it was something fun I did on the side I thought it would be cool to do. If I don't get at least 250 to 300 people watching each video, it's not worth doing the videos. And current day, I have an average of about 35,000 people watching each video. Wow. So it's, it's definitely grown. And I can't imagine if 250 people watch my videos still doing them. But back then, that was my goal. Right. So well, I, because it was better than 12 people watching your video. It was better than 12. And at the time, I had walked through all of the departments in my store. I said, hey, listen, have you watched my new video? Can you please watch my new video? Every person individually, can you please watch my new video? Because I knew that you know, more people watching means more people watching. And so eventually that grew, and again, it just seems silly to walk up to everyone in my current position and go, hey, would you mind watching my although, video real Although quick? you did ask me to watch the video. But mug, 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 where's my coffee mug? I need some coffee, that's not mine. That's not mine, who has my coffee? My, hi, do you guys ever turn those things off? But since you're here, you may remember that not too long ago, I had State Senator Mike Connolly, and Senator Connolly was just such a pleasure, such an honor to have him on the show. And what he taught me was that as you're on your Think Bigger journey, opportunities are going to present themselves. And you have to be ready for them, your eyes have to be open, because when that opportunity arrives, you have to be ready to seize it. You can't let it pass you by. Dude, this is my mug. What kind of what kind of obstacles and challenges have you run into, you know, as a politician coming up through the ranks? Well, oftentimes you hear, uh, you know, it's not your turn, Mike. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be thinking of running for this office because it's not your turn. And that's something I want everyone listening to this show to understand. Opportunity presents itself, and you better seize it because opportunities come and go. And so there was an opportunity to run for the state house, and for a flicker, I hesitated, and then I realized this opportunity may never come again. And uh, and I felt like the experience I had, I could apply it at the state level in in a real positive way. So I seized it, and I took what I took from it was whether I win or lose, I'm going to run hard. I'm going to try to win. Uh, and if I win, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the best I can as long as the people will allow me to. So the opportunity presented itself and I seized it, I guess. So as you know, I took a step away from uh, hosting Think Bigger for a few episodes there. And this was really cool for me because now I got to watch the show as, as a member of the audience, just like you're watching it now. I had no idea what Joe and the guests were going to talk about. And it was really just fun to sit down and be on the other side of it. So when Joe was talking to Tom Gregg, it was just a great conversation and really the key takeaway from Tom, and once again, consistent amongst all the big thinkers, is that you never stop learning. You should never be satisfied with what you know today. You should always be trying to get better. And here's Tom's take on it. Actually, I was, as we were, you were talking, I was thinking, you know, thinking bigger is really being bigger. And I, I think that, you know, for myself, being bigger is to, you know, the, 
to dial into some of the, the greatest minds that ever have lived. So I think if you expose yourself to books and audiobooks, I drive a lot, so I'm always on the road, and I wanted to make sure that I was using my time as effective as possible. And so I'm able to replace what could be a downtime or time listening to music, uh, which is, is good, but I think consuming a full hour or hour plus to commute home to just music is mm -hmm. not as, as valuable as time as you could be if you were invested in an audiobook. And one of the tips I will add to the audiobooks is uh, one thing I saw on, Facebook, on uh, YouTube was with the iPhone and probably Android as well, you can speed up the pace of an audiobook. Mm -hmm. So going from one time up to two, uh, I leave it at one and a half. And, and so you I'm use able the to, Audible app, right? I use just the, I go on to iTunes and oh, buy the, the iTunes. books through okay. iTunes directly. Cool. Yeah, I speed it up to one and a half, so in an hour drive, uh, I can get you know, an hour and, almost an hour and 40 minutes of content in that one hour. So uh, specific uh, books and authors that I like, um, Malcolm Gladwell is I think, a great one. So we talked about yeah. uh, David, David and Goliath. Goliath. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think a lot of the other ones are just the positive mindset people. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think um, Jeffrey Gittimer is certainly a good one. You know, setting your mind right going into work. Mm -hmm. You need to go into work with a positive attitude. And I think uh, being a naysayer or a negative or a no person, as opposed to being one that's positive and, and trying to find ways. Uh, I think it's anything, you know, Grant Cardone is more of a positive sales guy. Uh, and one of the things about him, he talks about, you know, if, if you could do it, how would it be? So the next episode of Think Bigger that Joe hosted featured that guy. And what I learned from Mark was very similar to what Tom had to say. And what I really took to heart about his message was is that you should always be trying to achieve more. Even if you're having fantastic results today, that is no good reason to sit on your laurels and not try to do better. Here's what Mark had to say. Hit the moment, and I think of it all the time. Like, there's always something more to do. You always want to grow. You always want to think. And you know, I, I always people I work with, and even in inter interviews, I, I talk about this. Is you know, no matter what you do, always, always think bigger. Always like try to get to that next step. You know, you can come in and do your job and do your job well, but what's that going to get you? you? Do do other things. Do what you want, but really try to uh, expand your knowledge and always learn. Um, I'm always reading. I literally probably read about 10 to 15 books a month. Uh, most of them, some of them are fiction, but most of them are, has to do with something, just learning something. Um, I'm a pilot, I love to fly, and I got um, to a point where I just wanted to learn more, so now I'm going for my IFR rating, and that's a lot of work but it's cool and it's something I really like and you know I'll stay up till one o'clock in the morning reading that and just trying to learn more and absorb it. This is a heck of a book and uh, I'm actually a little jealous that Joe got to interview Christy Hedges and I didn't because she is so smart but Joe got to do it and it was great and what was really cool to me is just how Christy laid out some of the the, the neuroscience behind the scenes that that helps us achieve these things and that how our brain works in these fascinating ways. I mean it's just so impressive, so cool. Uh, let's see what Christy has to say about it. Um, so in your book you also state that it's easier to form new connection, new connections in the brain mm -hmm. versus changing old connections or, or habits, let's say. Yeah. So can you expand on that Isn't a little that bit? Isn't that crazy? I, I right? found that's that was really interesting. Yeah, that's a crazy and concept. And probably why a lot of people don't stick to New Year's, uh, New Year's resolutions or you know anything that they want to change in their mind. It's right. almost easier to start a different path. And we're awful at it, right? We just, uh, um, well, you know, that's why the, the gym industry exists as it does because nobody keeps them. Uh, well, so I started getting really interested in neuroscience, you know, it's been probably 10 years now, um, and, you know, looking at what makes people change, because I'm a coach, and so I'm all about helping people change, and uh, neuroscience has found its way into all kinds of different uh, domains, and we hear a lot about how it's attached to leadership, uh, which I think is very exciting, and, and I'm a little bit of a junkie about it, so I'm always reading new studies and, and uh, trying to apply it to my work and to myself. Uh, but, you know, what we know from neuroleadership and being able to really look at MRI scans is that when we have thoughts that, that we consistently think together, there's the deep grooves in the brain in our synapses, right? So it's just, it's how our brain craves efficiency. So we look for information that supports what we already think. Um, it's actually easier to have a new insight because it's a new connection that has no groove. 
So when we're able to really have that time and that reflection, reflection time to take, kind of take a step back and look at something in a unique way and form a new thought, uh, that's so much easier for us than trying to go back to the same thought we've had and, uh, and disprove it. It happens, it happens to people all the time, but it's easier to capture a new thought. And if you thought all that was awesome, you were going to love this. Still not convinced that a Think Bigger mindset can take you to new heights? Kick back, relax, and watch this video from Danny Dover, very first guest on Think Bigger. Let's check it out. So I don't know about you guys, but I feel refreshed, I feel invigorated, and I feel like we're all on the same page now. I think it was really important for us to step back and look at you know, the people we've talked to uh, and to, to really get down those takeaways of what we've learned and how we can utilize them in our own Think Bigger mindsets. Because really guys, truly, you know, we wanna help you get these ideas out of your head and get them onto paper and into reality. So do us a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow along with us, and can't wait for you to see you next time here on Think Bigger.